Hello everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a test I am really, really excited for. One of my favorite dyeing techniques ever is breaking Wilton's Violet. So would it surprise you that I wanted to test and see whether the Jacquard Acid Dye Violet will break? I don't know what to expect, I've never done this before, but we are going to do some dip dyeing to find out. Today's video is sponsored by C4 Studio. In my dye pot, I have 10 cups of tap water, and I am going to add 2 tablespoons of white vinegar, and I am heating this up. I chose these proportions because this is what I like to do when I am designed to break Wilton's Violet. So I figured that as a starting point, I would start with the conditions that I am most comfortable with. Similarly, instead of doing some research to figure out how much of my 1% stock solution I should add to the pot, I think I'm going to start off adding a half cup of the 1% stock solution and we can adjust this after we dip dye the first skein as of yarn as needed. And again, I have chosen to start off with this half cup of volume because when I am dip dyeing one skein of broken violet, I mix my dye into a half cup of water and then I like to add it to a pot with 10 cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. So I'm just trying to mirror the conditions I do with food coloring. Today we are going to dip dye 100 grams of Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it is currently pre-soaking in plain tap water. Here is my Jacquard Violet stock solution, and it looks like I do have some sediment or particles that may have crashed out of solution at the bottom. So I am shaking this up before I pour it into the pot. All right, we are boiling. I'm going to shake my dye again. And I'm now gonna add half a cup to the dye bath, which would be about um, oh, and it, my, my measuring cup even says that, even though I don't think you can read it. It's 118 milliliters. Oh. All right, there is our dye. So normally I like to add the dye and then immediately, immediately start dip dyeing. But I did spill a little bit, so I don't know if things will crash out with the Jacquard acid dyes or what. But I'm gonna reduce the heat so we're at just below a simmer. Take a deep breath. Oh, I should grab my tongs so I have them in hand. Everything I am using today is dedicated dye equipment. Um, I am using, you know, from my measuring cups to my tongs to my pot. All right, and so here is our pre-soaked yarn. And let's start Dip dyeing. Hoo hoo. So I was a little curious if I was going to be adding not enough dye, but it looks like this is pretty good actually. And the color is already starting to clear. Cool. This is going nice and fast, just like food coloring, which was one of the things I was really, really curious about. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the yarn, but I think it's safe to say from this first little experiment that we're not really seeing any breaking. We're seeing a really nice purple, but a purple that... Uh, and you know the water is still a bit pink so I want to give this some time but we're getting a nice purple but a gradient of purple which is not something that we get with food coloring I am really really excited about this 
Um, let me zoom in so you can see because getting a pale purple is not something that we've really been able to do on this channel before. So, woohoo, woohoo! Um, I am going to go ahead. There, that, that's a little better representation of the color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this, I think, gosh, I don't know. Uh, let's give it five minutes and see where we are. Five minutes have passed, and it looks like that that pink that we saw in the water is starting to clear. Um, it's interesting because with food coloring we usually see the blues absorb first and so the resulting water usually doesn't have much of a pink hue. But I'm going to go ahead and, hmm, I'm debating removing it now, adding more heat or what, but I think I'm going to go ahead actually and turn off the heat and let this yarn cool for say 10 minutes in the pot um, and we'll check back in and maybe remove it. After 10 minutes, the pot is still definitely warm because you can see the steam coming off of it. But the water actually does look pretty clear. So I am going to go ahead and oops. so I'm going to go ahead and remove the yarn from the dye pot right now. I'm letting some of the water drain out so that way. Uh, it can cool faster. All right. But we have a really, really nice purple gradient. I am going to let this cool and then we will wash the yarn. Another thing I sort of want to add is that this is a very blue purple. Um, there's no way anyone would mistake this as pink, but some people might, um, might argue that it is a bit bluish. Um, I mean, I absolutely love it. It's a shade that I adore, but I just wanted to point that out. It is now time to wash our pretty, whoop, our pretty purple gradient. I'm going to turn on the cool water and add some liquid dish soap. And C4 Studio, because of your support, Ooh, look at that pale, pale purple over there. Because of your support, I now have something to point to when people want a solid, unbroken purple. Um, you know, skip the food coloring and go to Jacquard Acid Dyes. But, as I'm rinsing this, you can see that all of the color is in the yarn. Which is great, because that means that this is very, very much like food coloring as well when it comes to washing. So I'm going to rinse this a couple more times to get all of the soap out, and then I will hang it up to dry. Here is our gorgeous purple gradient that we achieved by dip dyeing stroll fingering yarn into some Jacquard's Violet Acid Dye. This is an unbroken purple, which is awesome. I mean, my favorite dyeing technique in the world is breaking Wilton's Violet into the magenta and blue and seeing the different ways that I can push that. But as someone who loves the color purple, achieving this purple gradient is really, really nice. Um, it's nice to be able to create something like this that isn't broken in my favorite color. And now I really feel like I have something to recommend when people ask how they can get a really good purple color. I would probably recommend staying away from food coloring and trying commercial dyes, but the technique of dip dyeing this into, this, into the acid dyes was remarkably similar to what I've been doing with the food coloring. The dye struck to the yarn extremely quickly and the dye doth exhausted quickly. And so, these techniques that I've been, I guess, cultivating using food coloring translate really, really well into the commercial acid dye space. C4 Studio, I hope that you will love this yarn as much as I do. I am aware that there are some acid dyes, some purple acid dyes that will break. 
And that is something I'm really excited to explore in the future. The Jacquard Violet is a very blue purple, and in some instances, without having something that's a true blue to compare it to, it almost starts to read as blue. But, you know, I promise that we are definitely in the purple territory. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for joining me as I explore a whole new landscape that is acid dyes. If you want to see more of my adventures, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Thanks for watching!